for today's lesson, we will be discussing about simple ordinary annuity and simple annuity too. So, we will be discussing what is an annuity and we will be differentiating uh, these two kinds of simple annuity. So, let's discuss first what is annuity. An annuity is a fixed amount of money paid to someone at regular intervals subject to a fixed compound interest rate. So when you say annuity, these are the fees that we're, we are paying. For example, a house loan, house rent, uh, investments or insurance or tuition fees and so on. Okay, As long as you are paying a fixed amount given regular intervals. And this is again subject for compound interest rate. Now, there are two types of annuity. So, we have annuity certain and annuity uncertain. The difference is that if we're talking about annuity certain, it means that the payment is done on a definite duration. This means that there is a certain period wherein you have to pay uh, the given amount. So, for example, uh, you have to complete the payment of your housing loan for 30 years or you have to complete the payment of your um postpaid plan for two years so that is called annuity certain but if it's annuity uncertain that means that the payment is indefinite if the payment is indefinite that means uh, we don't know the exact date when will it end for example um, when you are renting a house so the house rent is under annuity uncertain because as long as you live in that house you have to pay another thing is like the insurance because of course you have to pay it and there is no definite end of paying that certain insurance so again these are the two kinds of annuity annuity certain and annuity uncertain now this is the branches of annuity so again annuity is divided into two annuity certain annuity uncertain and then annuity certain is still divided into two we have simple annuity and then we have general annuity so later I will be discussing the difference between the two and under simple annuity we have the ordinary annuity, annuity due and deferred annuity. So let's differentiate the two kinds of annuity certain, simple annuity and general annuity. When you say simple annuity, interest conversion or compounding period is equal or the same as the payment interval. So an example would be payment made every three months with 1.05% interest compounded quarterly. This means that your payment interval is just the same as the compounding period. So in this example, you are paying every three months. And at the same time, there is now an interest that is compounded quarterly. So your payment interval is just the same as the compounding period. However, if they are different, so if the compounding period is unequal or not the same as the payment interval, we will call it as the general annuity. For example, payment made at the end of each month with 1.05% interest compounded quarterly. So as you can see here, the payment interval is after every month, but then the interest is compounded quarterly. So they are not the same. So that's why we refer to it as the general annuity. Now, under our simple annuity, there are three. So, we will just be discussing the two kinds of annuity here. So, first is the ordinary annuity. So, it is an annuity in which the periodic payment is made at the end of each payment interval. So, for ordinary annuity, again, the payment is made at the end of each payment interval. So, for example, you are renting a house. And you start renting a house, let's say, on December 3. And you have to pay every month for the rent. Now, if it's under ordinary annuity, then your first payment will be made after or at the end of the first payment interval. So, you started at December 3. Of course, the next will be January 3. So, you will not pay anything on December 3, but your payment should be made on January 3. So, your first payment will be on January 3. Okay? So, it depends now on the lender on what date are you going to pay. So, um, But, for ordinary annuity, the only thing that we have to understand here is that you are um, paying 
at the end of each payment interval. So we also have what we call as future value for our annuity. So it is the total accumulation of the payments and interest earned. So let's say you want to identify how much you have to pay all in all including the interest and your monthly or periodic payments. So we will be computing for the future value. Let's say uh, you have to pay for a postpaid plan for two years and you have to pay 1700 every month. So if you want to compute the total amount that you paid, then you have to compute for the future value. Now the formula for the future value is this, FV equals P, where P is the regular or periodic payment. So this is the payment that uh, you have to pay during uh, every period. And then we have times the quantity of 1 plus I, where I is the periodic rate, and we can solve it using I equals R over M. Where R is the interest rate, and M is the number of compounding periods within a year. And then you raise it to N, where N is the total number of conversion periods for the whole term, given by N equals T times M. Where T is the length of the terms in years. So for example, you have to pay uh, for 5 years. So 5 there is our T. And then minus 1 all over I. So this is the formula for the future value under ordinary annuity. We also have what we call as the present value. So it is the principal that must be invested today to provide the regular payments of an annuity. So an example would be, uh, you want to identify, let's say, how much can you loan given that you can pay um, every month by 5,000 pesos. So with that, you have to solve for the present value. And the formula for the present value is this, PV equals P times 1 minus quantity of 1 plus i raised to negative n all over i. So, the values of p, i, and n are just the same as with what we have for the future value. So, again, this is the formula for the present value of ordinary annuity. Example number 1. Erica deposits 1,000 pesos at the end of every 3 months in an account that pays 3% compounded quarterly. How much will the amount in the account be after 5 years? So if you will look at this problem, you will see that Erica will deposit 1,000 pesos every 3 months. So every 3 months. And the account compounded quarterly. So if it's every three months, that means uh, she have to deposit every quarter. So that means the payment interval is the same as the compounding period. So it's under simple annuity. And then, since it was mentioned here that Erica needs to deposit at the end of every month, that means this is under ordinary annuity. Now we have to determine if this problem involves future value or present value. Since the question is how much will be the amount in the account be after 5 years, that means we have to get the total accumulated money after 5 years. So that means we are dealing with future value. So we will be now uh, solving for the future value of this given word problem. So let's identify the values. P is the payment. So we have 1,000. R is the rate. So it says that the account pays 3% interest. So this will be 0 0.03. Then for M, number of compounding periods. So it says quarterly. So that means it's 4. And T for the duration of the payment is 5 years. So T is equal to 5. Now before we can substitute to our formula, we have to solve for I and N first. So I can be solved by dividing R by M. So R is 0 0.03, M is 4. So we divide this, we will get 0 0.0075. And then for N, all we have to do is just to multiply T by M. So we have 5 times 4 or 20. So now that we already have the values, we can now substitute to our formula for future value. So we have the payment, so we have 1,000 here, times 1 plus 
i which is 0 0.0075 raised to n which is 20 and then minus 1 over i which is 0 0.005 and then over i, which is 0 0.0075. Now, all you have to do is to simplify everything. So, just input everything in the calculator. So, our future value now will be 21,491.22. So, all you have to do is just to round off into two decimal places. So, that means after five years, Erica's money will now be 21,491.22 pesos. So that's how you solve for the future value of this given word problem. Another example, Dr. Alagos is considering a 30-year money loan at 6% interest compounded monthly. He can make payments of 5000 every end of the month. How much is the largest loan that he can afford? So in this problem, again, it's under simple annuity and this one is under ordinary annuity because the payment should be made at the end of the month. So the question now is, are we dealing with present value or future value? Since we have to identify how much is the largest loan that he can afford. So that means we are referring to present value given that he can pay 5,000 pesos every end of the month how much uh, should be the loan that how much will be so how much is the largest loan that he can afford so we are solving for the present value so let's identify here the values that we need so P or the payment so there is 5,000 and then the rate, 6%, so that's 0 0.06. Then we have the M, since it is compounded monthly, so we have uh, 12. And then time, since the time here is 30 years, so we have 30 for the time. So we will do the same thing, we will solve for I, so that is R divided by M, so 0 0.06 divided by 12. That will give us 0 0.005. And then for N, you multiply P by M. So this will give us 360. Now after this, all you have to do is to substitute the given values to our present value formula. So we have here the payment, 5,000 times. Then we have 1 minus quantity of 1 plus I, which is 0 0.005, raised to negative N. So negative 360 over i which is 0 0.005 so again just input everything into our calculator so you should get a value of 833,958.07 or this means that the largest loan that he can afford considering that payment method is 883,958.07 pesos. Next, let's proceed with annuity due. So now, what's the difference between ordinary annuity and annuity due? So it is an annuity in which the periodic payment is made at the beginning of each payment interval. So with here, in annuity due, so in annuity due, the payment is made at the beginning of each payment interval. So with ordinary annuity, the payment is at the end. For annuity due, it's in the beginning. So let's go back to our example a while ago. So let's say you started renting a house on December 3. So that's the start of the payment interval. And after a month, so that means that's January 3. So for annuity due, you have to pay already at December 3. So under annuity due, you already have to pay at the beginning of the payment interval, which is on December 3. So this will be your first payment. Now, since this is your first payment, so for the next month, January 3, you also have to pay again. So this is now your second payment. So that's the difference now between ordinary annuity and annuity due. So, so in annuity due, you have to pay 
at the beginning of each payment interval. The formula now for the future value and present value of annuity due is the same as with what we had for ordinary annuity. But the only difference is that we are multiplying 1 plus i into our formula. So the other factors are still the same. We have p, periodic payment, i is still the same. It's r over m. And then we have and then we have n, which is t times m. So again, it's just the same. What we just add is you multiply also 1 plus i. Same case with present value. So it's the same as with what we have for uh, ordinary Jew. But again, we just have to add 1 plus i or multiply 1 plus i. And for our last example, Ms. Perez borrowed money as a capital for her business. She plans to pay back her lender by paying 5,000 pesos at the beginning of each month for the next 5 years at an interest rate of 10% compounded monthly. How much can she borrow at this rate? So as you can see, the payment should be done at the beginning of each month. So it's under Unwitty Jew. Now, we have to identify if this word problem talks about future value or present value since we want to identify how much can she borrow given that she can pay 5,000 pesos every month. This means that we are talking about the present value. So let's identify the things that we need. So P or the payment is 5,000. Rate is, since this is 10%, 0 0.10. M, compounded monthly. So this one should be 12. And D is equal to 5, since she needs to pay it for the next 5 years. So we compute 4i. So it's 0 0.10 over 12. Now you will notice that uh, it will be continuous. So, to make it accurate, let's just represent this using fraction. So, we have 1 over 120. So, if in case you divide and it happens that it's continuous, it's better if we will write it in fraction form. So, that it will not affect our final answer later on. Because, um, if you will just round off the decimal, so, we might get different answers. So, it's safer to use a fraction if in case that the decimal number that you will arrive at is uh, continuous and then for n we have 5 times 12 which is equal to 60 so let's substitute this to the formula for the present value of unwitted you so 5000 times and then we have 1 minus 1 plus i which is 1 over 120 raised to negative of n so negative 60 all over i which is 1 over 120 times 1 plus i which is 1 over 120 and then all you have to do is to simplify this so we will get 237,287 point 90 so that means she can borrow 237,287.90 pesos given that she will pay using this rate which is 5,000 every month okay again the reason why I used 1 over 120 is that when I divide 0.10 by 12 it will be continuous so, if we will just get 0 0.0083, it might affect our final answer. So, to make it accurate and to avoid rounding off in our solution, so, I prefer to use a fraction form, which is 1 over 120. So, again, that's how you solve for our present value and also the future value under annuity due and ordinary annuity. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about simple ordinary annuity and annuity due and see you next time.